All right, knowledge is power. So understanding what you can expect as a real estate agent and for the real estate market in a typical market during an election year is critically important. Got the best in the business with us today. David Childers, CEO for Keeping Current Matters, gonna break all this down for us. Man, I'm really excited for this conversation because I yeah. know that I know, uh, based on our previous conversation, we got some good stuff that's gonna get some yeah. people, um, some opportunity to really add value to their clients in yeah. a special way. So let's talk about this. Here we are, basically, when we're recording this, it's the middle of the year, we're heading into the second half of the year year, right. an election year specifically, right. Right. what are some of the things that agents should understand in a typical election year that we would be facing and that maybe where those opportunities are? Yeah, yeah. So I'll break that down and, and I appreciate this conversation because I think it's a topic that's going to come up, whether it's something we're thinking about or maybe people that we're working with are wondering, right. okay? And, and I always think um, that, and we were talking about this uh, earlier, is the best way to answer a question like this is... Uh, with the response of what typically happens to sales, to prices, to mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you, the, the research that our team has done, and they've done a phenomenal job in grabbing what's happened in past elections so that we can say, okay, is that what's going to happen this time? You know what I mean? But it gives sort of the confidence to people that are maybe wondering if they should make a decision, okay, I can, I can now be educated and I can make that decision. But I, I would say this, as we kind of kick things off, is there, there are three areas that uh, seem to come up over and over in this that affect people's buying decisions during an election cycle. One is uncertainty, right? I just, I don't know what's gonna happen. Second are the policy expectations, which is largely driven by, is my person going to be elected or, or is the other person, how do I feel about the direction of the country? Because that ultimately leads into consumer confidence, right? If I think we're heading in the right direction, I'm more likely to uh, buy a home, right? If I think the country or whatever is going in the wrong direction, I might hold back, right? Mm -hmm. I will tell you this though, and it's it's great information to be equipped with, but the truth is the election cycle does not have a dramatic effect on what we do. There are things that we can say, okay, this happens during a, an election year or this happens the year following an election year, but largely what happens is people say uh, in October and November, I might wanna see what's gonna happen, then I'm gonna make my decision, and here's a lesson. In those two months of an election year, we don't ever lose those sales. They sometimes just get delayed. Right. And so there's a message there for people that are wondering, should I put my home on the market? Should we do something right there? That a lot of people slow down during that time. But I, I also want to hop into, because it's, it's very, very good, all of the data and research our team has done yeah. for, uh, for this election cycle. Well, and I think that's what we're talking about. It's our job to equip our the buyers and the sellers that we're working with mm -hmm. and the best information possible yep. to make the best decision for them. And that's what you guys do great at KCM. So let's go into some of this. Okay. Let's start literally with what you, you mentioned that, uh, you know, what is the typical situation we see in an election year as far as what happens this second okay. half of the year? Okay, so let's talk about activity and, and what goes on. And I'm gonna use a couple of slides here that, that you'll be able to see. And Jimmy, we can yeah. give them to folks in the show Absolutely. notes or wherever yes. a, a link is so you can use that. Um, in the first one is this slide here that shows a seasonal drop in activity in an election year. And so what that means is from October to November in a typical non-election year, activity drops about 10%, you know, kind of a fall to heading into winter slowdown. In an election year, October to November, sales drop about 15%. So not, not tremendous, bad, yes. but people sort of in that moment, they put their hands in their pockets and they're like, I'm gonna wait and see. Right. Right, which makes a lot of sense. I wanna see what's gonna happen. I wanna see what's you know, you know the issue at hand. I wanna see if my person's gonna get elected is, is maybe a lot, of, a lot of the case, and then what does that mean? So, so marginal slowdown, but not, not a lot, and, and you can see that in the data very, very clearly. Yeah, and that's, and that's the thing is, is this typically happens at a time when there is a natural mm -hmm. seasonal slowdown right. in the marketplace, so it, it may feel a little more exaggerated even though it's really not. But, but um, good point, yeah. And also, like you said, sometimes what we see is, is that these transactions, they don't go away, Mm -hmm. They're just delayed. So yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. What does it look like as far as transaction numbers as we go through some of those things? Sure. Let me say one thing. You know, we, we operate in a business that we operate a lot more like a, an Apple store than a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I say that is if, if, you, if you ran a McDonald's, 
and you ran an Apple store, two different people, and a snowstorm blows into town, and nobody can leave their house, McDonald's loses that business. You don't decide not to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and so you don't get those back, right? right? And you, maybe you're maybe you're stuck at, at home, and maybe it's a, a hurricane or whatever it is that would come down here where we're at uh, mm -hmm. on the coast. If you're an Apple store, you still can't get out of the house, and so maybe you buy that iPad next week. Mm -hmm. You don't lose those sales. We 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 operate a lot more like an Apple store than we do a restaurant. I mean, that's good. Stuff. And so we have to understand that it doesn't doesn't change the decision. It just may delay it a little bit. So here's here's what we know. And this, again, I, I mentioned uh, our KCM research team. They they went out to uh, NAR and to HUD and to all the sources and said what typically happens in an election cycle. And so I'll, I'll give you a couple of those things. Give you the slides. It, home sales went up the year following an election in nine of the last election cycles. Mm -hmm. So we know that. Typically what happens to home sales is we sell more homes the year following an election. Right. So that's interesting, right? Somebody asked what happens? Well, typically here's what happens. We sell more homes year after. Now, there's another interesting fact is the year following an election in the four year cycle is usually the best year for real estate. We usually sell more homes in the first year and not as many as the next. I do not know that that'll be true right now, right? right? We're sort of coming back uh, in, in this market and, and all across the country in real estate. I think we'll sell more homes next year than we have this year for sure. I do believe yeah. that. Um, but typically what happens in an election cycles, we sell more homes a year following. Yeah, that's great. And what's great about this is, our job is, is, I mean, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, right. but what we do want to do is, is to put our clients and give them that information in a way that they can make that best decision. Yeah. Um, I want to say, so, I wanna say yeah. something about that. A lot of people struggle in this area because they think, I can't give perfect advice. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to say this, nobody can give you perfect advice ever. It's just not possible. What you want to do is give somebody the best advice based on the information you have at that moment. And, and the analogy I always think of in this is, is, is going to the doctor. There is no way that a doctor can give you perfect advice. And heaven forbid you end up in a situation where you have, you know, uh, some type of illness or, or family member has something. What they're going to do is they're going to sit you down and they're going to say, here's what we see, here's what we know, and here's what I'm going to prescribe. And they're going to say, come back in 30 or 45 days, and they're going to say, here's what I see. Here's what I know, and here's what I'm going to prescribe. And it may be different right. in that case. And they're a professional, right? They're a practicing professional. Right. And so my job as an agent is to step in to say, here's what I see in the market. Here's what typically happens. How can I help you make the best decision for you and your family? Oh, that's great. That is really good because I do think that that desire for perfection on the information yeah. freezes people. Totally, completely. And I think there's a way to think about it to say, hey, I'm always going, I struggle with it. Mm -hmm. Let me be very honest. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to give you or, or anybody that, that I'm talking to the best information I have in that moment. Right. And if that changes tomorrow, I'm going to call you up and I'm going to tell you. Right. I'm going to say, hey, we talked about this yesterday, but this changed. What's, what's one that's very you know, true right now is mortgage rates, right? right. We might've been somewhere, they're, they're literally, we're in a cycle right now where 24 and 48 hour news cycles in the Fed can change things in a normalized market would take six to eight months, mm -hmm. right? So I wanna be the professional, but let's hop to, to prices. Yeah. So we talked about transactions. What happens to prices in an election cycle? What we know, seven of the last uh, eight election cycles, prices went up the year following. Mm -hmm. So, okay, typically what happens? We sell more homes the year following, prices go up the year following. There is one exception, that was 2008. Right. A little bit going on in the real estate market, but no doubt that's what we can help people uh, make a decision by, right? Do you wanna be in a market where that is true? Do you wanna you know, do something right now? How does that help inform the decision that you need to make? Absolutely, yeah, and I think that's a great point. Is, is mm -hmm. It's speaking from a specific standpoint of that home, buyer or seller that's like, I think I'm just going to wait to see what right. happens. Okay, well, let's walk through these things in a typical market right. of what you can expect, and let's make a decision on when this needs to happen in the best situation for you. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's talk about this. We've talked about, obviously, the number of transactions. We've talked about pricing. Mm -hmm. uh, big topic now. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the mortgage rates and what yeah, typically yeah. happens. Let me give you one other piece on, on prices, and we're down here on the coast with, with you, Jimmy, and it's great to be here with your team. Um, new home prices. We went and looked at that as well. 
10 of the last 11 presidential cycle, new home prices went up, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And so something interesting to, to look at there. Obviously, a big piece of price in a lot of the country is based upon the mortgage rate. There, there are three factors that affect affordability in um, uh, buying a home. And, and we sit right now at a 40-year low of affordability of homes in this country. We, we were talking about it a minute ago and just the fact of Gen Z and can I buy a home? And I have you know, a thought on that, but I, I, I think we need to be more vocal about things we can do to help people overcome affordability challenges. Um, and I don't want to get us off track here, but there are three things that affect affordability. Please, yeah. Wages in this country, and I'll tell you this, I can give you the facts to prove it too, wages are climbing at a faster pace. That bodes well for affordability. Prices, you know, the price of the home affects affordability, and prices are not rising at the point that um, they have been. And third is mortgage rates, what we're about to talk about. That those three things are the direct impacts uh, onto affordability. Now, there are other uh, you know, external factors, sure. insurance and things that are going up certainly here in this area that, that affect affordability as well. But what we found is from the middle of the year, from July to November in an election cycle, that eight of the last election cycles, mortgage rates came down. Mm. Now, uh, I can jokingly say that's where we can get some folks fired up about how influential yeah. um, you know, politics plays into that and everything. Right. I, I don't personally believe that that is as big of a factor as maybe some people think. Right. But hey, if they come down, we'll take that. That's right. Right? That's a yeah. good thing. Yeah. Um, but it's very interesting that you see that. I think we'll, that will be true this year. I yeah. think we'll see uh, mortgage rates come down marginally um, between now and the election. So basically what you said is, is we're seeing wages go up. Yep. We're seeing pricing not go up at the pace. Mm -hmm. And if we're looking at a typical election cycle, mortgage rates come down from yeah. July until the end of the year. So all three of those factors are moving in the direction at this time towards more affordability. That's a positive, something we can be you know, so, working towards. Absolutely, I mean, you, you couldn't have said it better. I think anybody today in real estate must have a relevant market opinion on affordability. What right. do you believe about right. affordability? And I gave you mine. Wages rising faster, home prices not going up as quickly, mortgage rates look like we're in a downward trending environment. Matter of fact, the next couple of years are forecasts that rates would come down and you know, low sixes, maybe we dip our toe into the, into the high fives. I'm telling you, we dip our toe into the high fives, I think folks are like, we're gonna do it, right? We're, we're gonna get back in. I think those things bode well for affordability. Yeah. Uh, and over time, we will see improvements in that. Yeah, and I would say this too, if you're an agent out there, we know that our market works in a cycle mm -hmm. from a standpoint of, from the time that you are having the conversations until the contract closes, 30, 60, 90, 120 days. So where we are now is, is equipping those buyers and sellers mm -hmm. for the opportunities that we see typically, we would see at the end of the year and also especially into next year. So this is a time really for those professional agents to really add value in a high level. I, I think you're right, Jimmy. I mean, we're, we're here at the middle of the year. You know, there's so much noise out in the world about the NAR settlement and mm -hmm. all the things that are happening in real estate. I would argue that there's not been a better time to be the educator in your market than right now. That's it. Right? And, and because we are playing for the second half of the year. I, I said this on a podcast that I was on uh, a couple weeks ago with Tom Ferry. I believe we'll see more activity in the second half of the year than we've seen in the first half of the year. We're playing right now for 2025, right? And, and, and for setting that up. And I believe the agent that's active, that's educating, that is out there will uh, you know, reap those benefits going into next year. Yeah, and I just, nobody equips agents better than you guys do. What's the best way for them to uh, get some additional information on KCM? Yeah, you can always go to trykcm.com and start a free trial and, uh, and check it out and see if it's right for you. And Jimmy, I'm always so glad to get a chance to spend time together and talk about this and, uh, and, and give folks sort of a, a view on the market that gives you uh, an opportunity to see where is there a, a chance to make a difference in people's lives. Absolutely. That's what drives us. You know, if you were, we're here down in your office, but up in our office in Richmond, Virginia, there's a wall that says, we believe every family should feel confident when buying and selling a home. And that's everything that we do is to give you the information you need to feel confident giving buyers and sellers what they need to make a great decision. Yeah, nobody better.
than you guys. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. you, man. All right, guys, make sure you reach out. Let David know how much you appreciate this. Um, we had one of our agents as we were sitting in there. Alexa said, I think David just made me a lot of money with this information. <laughs> I know that's the case for you guys as well. Take care and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.